address before the United Nations General Assembly, President Joe Biden declared that the United States is absolutely committed to preventing a wider regional war in the Middle East. But you know, he's got a funny way of showing it. Watch what he had to say. The world must not flinch from the horrors of October 7th. Any country, any country would have the right and responsibility to ensure that such an attack can never happen again. Thousands of armed Hamas terrorists invaded a sovereign state, slaughtering and massacring more than 1,200 people, including 46 Americans in their homes and at a music festival. Despicable, despicable acts of sexual violence, 250 innocents taken hostage. I've met with the families of those hostages. I've grieved with them. They're going through hell. Since October 7, we've also been determined to prevent a wider war that engulfs the entire region. Hezbollah, unprovoked, during the October 7 attack, launching rockets into Israel. Almost a year later, too many on each side of the Israeli-Lebanon border remain displaced. Full-scale war is not in anyone's interest. Even if the situation has escalated, a diplomatic solution is still possible. In fact, it remains the only path to lasting security to allow the residents from both countries to return to their homes and the border safely. And that's what, working, that's what we're working tirelessly to achieve. Hey, don't scroll away. Did, did, did. Come back, come back. Because before the video continues, we just want to urge you to lend your support to TYT. You power our honest reporting. You do it at tyt.com slash team and we love you for it. Well, if that is what the Biden administration is working tirelessly to achieve, they've got a funny way of showing it, considering the fact that the Biden administration continues to heavily arm Israel as its belligerent government continues to carry out bombardments of both Gaza and now Lebanon, its neighbor and a sovereign country. Uh, he also has a funny way of showing it, considering the fact that 40,000 American troops were already stationed in the Middle East is apparently not enough. And as a result of the escalation that we've seen from Israel uh, in Lebanon, the US is now going to send even more troops to <laughs> the region. We are involved in this war, whether Americans want to accept it or not, whether our government wants to tell us the truth or not. We are very much involved in this war and with Netanyahu continuing to escalate things, this could break out into an all out war, not just between Israel and Lebanon or Israel and, and Hamas, but between the United States and Iran if things keep going in the direction they're going in. I'm gonna give you more details about the troops in just a moment before I do, Cenk, jump in. Yeah, so uh, Joe Biden is a historic failure and so, if you're new to this and you we used to watch mainstream media, you'll say, what do you mean? He said nice words. That's called propaganda. Now, why do I call it propaganda? Uh, because sometimes words matter, right? Well, uh, let's look at what Joe Biden did as opposed to what he said, right? So normally we send Israel four billion a year. Why? Special ally. Okay. So that's already outrageous. Uh, they have universal health care, they have paid family. We have neither one of those things. Apparently they need our money anyway. Okay. Uh, are they under threat? Are they occupy? Like, are they being occupied? No, they're the ones occupying the Palestinians, etc. But in the middle of after they slaughtered at that point, I think over thirty to thirty-five thousand Palestinians, Biden said, "Oh my God, four billion is not enough. I want to send you a congratulations gift prize. I want to send you a lot more. I'm going to send you twenty-six billion. Way to kill all those Palestinians. This is a reward. So." If you kill more Palestinians, you will hear me say the words that I'm upset by it and that I would like a two state solution and you stop killing them. But remember, next time the check's gonna be even larger. Whatever check you need, I'm gonna send it to you as a thank you for slaughtering those Palestinians. Those are facts. And if you're a mainstream media reporter and you're still, a, oh my God, I have to protect Joe Biden. He's so powerful and lovely and decent human being. Okay, while you're doing propaganda on behalf of Joe Biden, riddle me this. So if Joe Biden really wanted to solve this, everyone with two bits of sense knows that he would use his what? Leverage, and the leverage he has is the $26 billion. He can cut it off, in which case Israel would be under a lot of pressure to get to a ceasefire deal and stop bombing all of their neighbors. He has not done that at all. That means he does not want to use his leverage, doesn't care about solving this at all, and we're gonna go to war because of him, because he would rather serve his donors 
than actually care about Palestinian lives at all. We're gonna go to a giant war because of Joe Biden. He's a historic failure. And Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, let me remind you, uh, traveled to the UK to essentially pressure them to lift any weapons ban toward Israel, something that they partly did because they were concerned that the UK's weapons were being utilized in war crimes. Anthony Blinken comes in and says, don't worry about the war crimes, okay? You are not to pause any weapon shipments to Israel. So they lie to our faces, like that's the thing that drives me crazy. You'll have press conferences featuring Joe Biden, uh, speeches featuring Joe Biden. You'll have press conferences featuring John Kirby and Anthony Blinken and they all tell us like we're working around the clock guys, we want peace. We want peace, we want a ceasefire. But behind the scenes, not even really behind the scenes, just out in the open, they continue funneling the weapons to the belligerent country that refuses to sign a peace deal. So with that in mind, let's talk a little bit about the troops. So the US is sending more troops to the Middle East as things escalate between Israel and Hezbollah. Uh, Major General Pat Ryder, who is the Pentagon's press secretary, would not say how many more forces would be deployed or what they would be tasked to do. But here is what we do know. In light of increased tension in the Middle East and out of an abundance of caution, we are sending a small number of additional US military personnel forward to uh, augment our forces that are already in the region. But for operational security reasons, I'm not going to comment on or provide specifics. Now again, keep in mind that the US already has 40,000 American troops stationed in the Middle East. And it's also important to keep in mind what the US is willing to do on behalf of Israel, not on behalf of the American people, on behalf of Israel. So here you have the White House National Security Advisor John Kirby explaining exactly what the US is willing to do by risking the men and women in our armed forces. We have taken a hard look at our posture in the region, our military posture in the region. We want to make sure that it's properly balanced and capable for a range of contingencies. The Department of Defense talked about some of the contingencies that they're going to be need to be prepared for. So I'll let them speak to that with more detail. But the president wants to make sure that, again, we have a full suite of appropriate military capabilities to take care of our national security interests, those of our allies and partners. And that's what this is really uh, all about. Let me just be clear, the US sending troops to the Middle East has nothing to do with the Americans and their national security interests. Yeah, no, it's be the exact opposite. Be very clear about that, okay? They're lying to you when they say that. Go ahead, Jake. Yeah, it's the exact opposite. They're putting the troops in harm's way so they can get hit. And then they go, oh, can you believe these dirty, savage terrorist Muslims hit our beloved troops that I put right underneath them? in a vulnerable area so that they can get killed. So I can say, oh, there was nothing we could do. We had to help Israel. We had to send in all of our troops and all of our weapons and all of our money to help Israel against the, oh, okay, these, these savages, right? So I look, this is as old as time, imperialism, uh, colonialism uh, and racism. Uh, and, and I see all those US government officials, Biden officials, I'm disgusted by them. Uh, they're war criminals and they're probably feted around town. Oh, It's a celebrity, Anthony Blinken. Gross. When I see Anthony Blinken is a monster. Disgusting. All of these guys are monsters. Uh, and, they, and so what are they doing? They sent, as you saw in the quote there from the Major General, quote, a small number of additional US military personnel. That is how we get dragged into every single war. Now we've been around long enough that we track that for you from the Iraq war to this war where they go, we're just sending a small number, limited number of military personnel to the air. Oh my God, they got killed. Oh, Nobody could have seen that coming. Well, I put him right underneath Saddam's foot so that he could stamp on them. And oh, now I gotta go kill Saddam and a million other people in Iraq. I put him right under the Ayatollahs. Oh, the American personnel got killed. Oh, nice uh, fodder for the Israeli war machine. I mean, oh, the Muslim savage terrorists, we had to spend a trillion dollars, two trillion dollars, five trillion dollars fighting Israel's war for it. That's the reality. Everything else is propaganda. 100%. And to me, if you just, I mean, it doesn't really take much to decode what John Kirby was saying there. We're sending our troops there to get ready for a possible hot war with Iran. Let's keep it real. That is the direction that this is heading in. And there, look, I, I think that Netanyahu, honestly, is also trying to wait it out. 
with the hope that Donald Trump gets elected. Oh No, there's no, 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 the war is also partly meant to help Donald Trump. Look, let me say things here in case you guys aren't clear on this. Uh, so it, it has, is the war at a point where it cannot be reversed? No, but it is awfully close and peace would need like a miracle comeback to get back into this race. Right now, the things that are done are almost, you can't take them back because they cross every red line with Hezbollah and Iran. So Hezbollah and Iran, every security analyst in the world says, has to strike back and has to try to strike back in a way that actually causes damage in Israel. Because all the rest of the strikes were just show. Like they, they throw up a firecracker, Israel knocks it down. It's a game they play so they can tell their uh, local population, oh, we hit Israel hard, we got those Zionists good. But now they're gonna have to actually attack Israel. And so when that happens, the dominoes fall, the war starts. Mm -hmm. and they, Netanyahu, in case you don't know this, Netanyahu's objective is not Lebanon. Lebanon is small beans. He wants Iran. He's wanted the war with Iran for the last 20, 25 years, and he's not unclear about it. He said it publicly so many times, and he has also said publicly that he wants America to yes, fight it. Be precise. He yes. wants the Americans, he wants the US and our soldiers to fight Iran on his behalf, on Israel's behalf. And, and right now, if you don't know, Netanyahu, uh, if uh, he were to sign a ceasefire deal, the right wingers, uh, Smotrich and Ben Gavir, would leave his cabinet. He would be forced to go into an election. He is likely to lose that election. So if he uh, signs the ceasefire, his career is finally over. He would never do that. We are going to go into one of the most needless wars not just in my lifetime, maybe ever. Nobody wants this war other than Netanyahu. Gavir and Smotrich. And Biden. And Biden will do whatever he's commanded to do. So if Netanyahu said, I changed my mind, Biden will be like, oh, great, thank you. Well, what do I, what, what do, I do next, sir? Okay, so that's just a fact. If you, again, corruption, APAC money, $11 million. Only the lunatics in Washington go. I bet he, Biden wasn't affected by the $11 million or the $100 million they sent, spent in this election. All right, last thing, guys. So as Netanyahu tries to drag us into that war with Iran, um, our guys, when they send the troops and they send our boats, even as they're going to the United Nations and saying, "Oh, we are so concerned about what Israel is doing," they're saying, out of an abundance of caution, you're going to put our troops right next to theirs. Wait, was Iran going to somehow, or Lebanon was going to somehow put Israel in such existential danger that they needed a U.S. aircraft carrier and a submarine and all these? To protect against an imminent attack, the Hezbollah has landed one rocket in 11 months that actually killed people. We got to send an aircraft carrier? No, we're sending those troops so they can get attacked, so that we can say, "Oh, there was nothing we could do. We must follow Netanyahu's orders." So if he goes to the election, he loses. That's why he's choosing to start this giant war. And last part of it, Anna, is if the war starts and it's a disaster, mm -hmm. it helps Trump. Yep. And so, and if Trump gets into office, he says, "Do whatever you want." Mary Middleton gave me ninety million dollars. I'll let you kill all the Muslims in the world. I couldn't care less, and I'll have America pay for it since I got bribed by the Adelsons. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.